Hello my friends, here it is Monday morning and we're back videoing again. I have another birthday to work on today, so I'm going to be making a devil's food cake, which is a chocolate cake, and it has a few of the properties of the um, red velvet cake we made a couple days ago, uh, you know, where they're separating the yolks and the whites, and so that's what makes this cake a little different from just all the regular chocolate cakes we make where we throw all the ingredients together and just um, uh, beat it. This one's going to have that you'll see when we get going like the Red Devil's Food Cake, but it doesn't have all the other attention it need to be made. First thing I did is spray my pan. I'm gonna use the 13 by nine by two, because for this family it's probably best just to have a big pan like this and not a, um, a, a layer of cake that they have to store somewhere. Um, you can do it in, in uh, uh, nine inch rounds or nine inch squares. If you're gonna do that, you bake it on 350 for 30 to 35 minutes. However, we're gonna put it in a 13 by nine by two, and that I think will start baking, and it doesn't have it in here, but I know most 13 by nine by twos, you you, the baking time is about 40 minutes. So you start checking with your toothpick at about 40 minutes. So that's what we're gonna do. So here we go, we're gonna start. First of all, I have taken the time to put Two, two and one quarters cup of all-purpose flour in here with a half cup of cocoa and a teaspoon and a half of baking soda. This one does not have baking soda and baking powder. It's just baking soda and a teaspoon of salt in it. And I stirred it up with a spoon and I put it aside. Um, now we're going to head over here. This, this um, cake doesn't take very long. It doesn't have all the processes that the um, red velvet did. Um, so I'm trying to, whoops, I don't want it this to fall over, so hold on. There we go. Let me get you down a little lower, so hopefully you won't fall over. There we go. Okay, so we are going to, there we are. Can you see in there? You can. There we are. So we've got the shortening, and what we have is one half cup of shortening. We're starting with that. And we are going to just beat that up really quickly. Not all that long on its own. There we are. We're going to beat that for 30 seconds. That's about 30 seconds. Here we go. There we are. I don't want to knock that over. We're going to add in here one cup of sugar. And in it goes. And we're going to take the time to add as well the one teaspoon of vanilla. So here we go. One teaspoon of vanilla. And it goes. There we are. And now we're actually going to beat it until it's fluffy. So here we go. Whoops, I don't want to hit the camera. Let's see if I can hold this up for you. Here we are. See how it's working it? I want to work it until it's fluffy. And my egg yolks, I've taken the time already to separate my eggs. You can see my yolks are over here. There are three. This recipe, I know that we did the other one, the red velvet cake, and the recipe said to have everything at room temperature. This one did not, actually. As a matter of fact, we're going to be adding cold water to this recipe at some point. So it does not say anything about cold water on this one. So, yeah, there we go. Now we're going to add the egg yolks one at a time. So I'm going to go get a little spatula so I can make sure that I get them out only one at a time. And we're going to beat after each yolk that we add. There's one. So, about a minute after each yolk. Well, that's beating. I mean, I had I, I did not hear back to see what the flavor of the red velvet cake was, but she did take a beautiful picture of it, a good slice of it, so we could see that I had thrown a lot of frosting in between the two layers, and that that was a really fun cake. So visually, that red velvet cake was really fun to see, to look at. 
So let me, there you go. Let me add another one here. Oops, it's sitting on something. Yep, there you go, a second one. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna take a moment to go do some scraping off the side because I saw one of those, that yoke sort of was setting on the side over here. And I want it all to incorporate. So I think between the yolks, I'm also gonna be, there we go. So we're going to do three of these eggs like this. about a minute and then I'm going to scrape all the sides again and then beat one more time after that. So yeah, I've been having a lot of fun. Oh, by the way, she likes peanut butter frosting on the top of this cake. So we've already made peanut butter frosting together, but I'll have to go back and see if that's the recipe I really want to teach you because I've got a new peanut butter frosting recipe that is super fab so I might just do peanut butter frosting again tonight and video that for you to see and I will use that one instead but let me check it out um, the one we have is sufficient but I just found one that's really 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 good and so I don't know I, I, I dare say I think it's better than the one we've used before okay hold on I'm gonna just hold that back for a second I'm gonna take this out for a minute and uh, just so that I can scrape this because I can't seem to ever get beyond the, the thing that's in the way and I can't get it scraped like I'd like to. There we go. There. All right. Boy, this is a... Again, guys, look at how rich this yellow is. I'm still using eggs um, from family. Um, these eggs that I'm using right this second are complements of Kinsley Corliss. And you can see how bright, bright yellow they are. They're really wonderful. I'm just excited about the... the these eggs have never failed me. Uh, and size-wise, though, if you want to get a bunch of them all to be the same size, you got to be clever. I'm um, looking around. To cook, you're supposed to be using large eggs and, and so... Sometimes it's hard to, to um, get a large egg. Sometimes they get really, really small. And so I'm really good now at, if I've got a really small one, I look around for a big one. Or I actually had a duck egg the other day, and I used a duck egg to offset a small one. So that's pretty funny. So I'm going to just beat it a little bit more here. Just to, there we go. See how fabulous that is? It's very fluffy and wonderful. So from here... I'm gonna lift this up for a minute and I am gonna start adding the uh, dry ingredients and the water so a little bit of dry a little bit of water and I'm just gonna keep um, um, it says beating on low e between each one so just a little bit. start with the flour There we go. And you can really see what's going on here. So then I'm going to incorporate a little bit of water. It's one and one third cup of water. And it says cold water. So slow after each one. I'm getting a little gooey right now, huh? So I'm going to add a little bit more flour at this point. Because it says alternately, so let it do its thing. A little bit more water. Let it do its thing. Just alternate. I just keep going back and forth on these guys. 
Okay, now I'm going to go a little bit more flour. Just kind of letting it mix a little in between each one. I'm going to do a little bit more water because you can see it's going together. I decided not to scrape the edges in until we're all done because it's a pain in the butt to disassemble everything. This is pretty cool actually. I don't know if you're seeing well on there. Yeah, it looks like you are. Okay, and then I'm going to do this two more times. that I'm only adding something after it looks like it's been incorporated. I'm going to stop the beater for a minute and pick it up because it just can't seem to get this bowl to uh, allow me to put everything in there. Plus there's some on the top of the beaters here so I'll push them over a little bit so you can see what's going on for now. Here we go. So excited about this Red Devil's Food Cake. I've been making the same, same chocolate cake for so many years, and I thought, I want to make, and I did do that chocolate cake for you guys much earlier in the game here, like months ago, but I just wanted to do something different. I thought, oh, I'm going to try a Red's Devil, I wonder what a Red Devil, not a Red Devil food cake, but a Devil's food cake is like, and so oh, I'm going to give it a try. So here, we'll get all the flour off the top of here, too. There we go. On low. Staying on low. Got to get incorporated some. I'm going to add the last of that water. Oops, can you see what's going on? There you go. Sorry, guys. I have to really pay attention. And we're going to turn it up a minute, a little bit. It's all mixing well. Then I'm going to stop for a second and scrape the whole thing just so I can make sure that everything is off the sides. So I hope you all had a good weekend. It wasn't like the most exceptional weather weekend, but I was seeing pictures of, um, I want to say it was on Mount Mansfield on the news this evening where they had rainbows up there that were ridiculously amazing. I didn't see it, but if you were hiking or skiing or whatever, I guess I understand that it was quite a show for you to see. So, yeah. All right. So I, I've just scraped this for the last time like this before we go over to our other station and do the magic with our eggs again. So I'm gonna just let it beat for another half a minute here. There we go. Isn't it wonderful it looks? I don't really want to beat it too much. I just want to make sure everything is incorporated and it is. Okay. So now I'm going to um, take it off of here. Because remember when we did the eggs the other day for the red velvet cake, um, we folded. So we don't do, I'm going to take this apart here now. You can see where I'm going to be taking this apart. Ah, and get everything off it that I can for now. See if I can get everything off with this maybe because this is what I'm going to be folding with anyway so that works out really well. Here we go. Oh we've had such a mild winter so far so yeah I'm kind of worried about what next summer is going to be. I hope we're not in some really crazy drought. Washing my hands again guys because I got some on my hands by touching everything. Well, you'll find that's what I do so much. I just wash my hands over and over and over again every time I bake. Every time I cook, every time I bake. I'm just washing, washing, washing my hands. Okay, so here you are. This is great. This is fantastic. I'm going to take it off of here because we're all done. And we're going to head over to the other station. Over here. Here we go. There. Now we're going to head over here where the egg whites are going to be just like we did the other day. We're going to go to a stiff peak, um, and then I'm going to gradually add in three quarters cup. Whoops, that would be good if I plugged it in. I'm glad that I have two kinds of beaters because this really helps. I would have had to stop and wash everything.
you're beating, you can see the 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 formation behind the beater. See how it's starting to make a formation? start out with soft peaks which that is and when you add the sugar you're going to do it a little at a time and then you are going to form a stiff peak which is a little bit like we saw the other day we made them stiffer here we go make sure you guys can see because I'm horrified thinking oh you probably can't see oh but there you are Okay. day that were just to the stiff peak without anything in them they were a flat color because it was just the egg whites and we folded them in the cake this time we're adding sugar to the egg whites and did you notice how glossy how it really looks glossy you know, you a stiff peak. So there we go. When we're doing this, of course, it makes me think of meringue because this is how you make meringue. But it has some vanilla in, in it as well. Um, but it also makes me make makes me think of. Well, I remember when we made that angel food cake together and all that those eggs we were crazily beating and all that kind of stuff. So right now, what I'm doing is I'm just cleaning off the edges of my pan. Before, oops, silly me. I was looking to see if you could see in the in the um, camera, and I went right off the edge. There you go. I want to make sure you can see. There, everything is already, and this is beautiful already. So we're adding some lightness. We're gonna fold this in. So just gonna take it and put it in here, and then we're gonna fold it in. We're not gonna stir. We're gonna fold because we don't. We just took all that time to put all that nice air in there, and we really want to fold it in. We don't want to knock down that air or overwork it or anything. We don't want to play with this too much. We just want to get it folded. And there we go. We're just going to fold it. See? Just folding. Until you can no longer see the white of the eggs. Again, that was three quarters cup of sugar that went into three beaten egg whites. You're using three eggs in this whole cake. You just are splitting them up just like we did the red velvet cake. Wow, this is gorgeous. And just before we did this, I don't know if you noticed, and that's why I moved it on purpose for you to see how it had gotten pretty rigid and stiff the other before we put this in here. So, you know, this obviously has a purpose. It's a good recipe. I have to make sure she tells us what she thinks of it. Again, I'm just scraping it off the sides, but as you can see, for all practical purposes, I still am just folding and just folding and just folding. So, um, from here, and, and we just keep folding, not a long time, not forever, just until 
no more whites. So let's see, do I see any more whites? A little bit up here. And then we're done. Fold. Okay, and that's it. So, there you go. All I'm going to do from here is just pour it into that one pan. I don't, I'm using a 13 by 9 by 2 pan, and so it's one good pan for them to be able to have to take care of and um, store, I should say. Not take care of, but to store. It's easier to store one like that instead of a layer. The layers, I mean. So there, I'm just going to put that into this 13 by 9 by 2 and I'm going to bake it on 350 for about 40 minutes. If you were doing the layers, it's 30 to 35 minutes. Remember, your ultimate test is put that toothpick down there. If it comes out wet at all with any batter on it, mm -mm, it, it, it needs to go in. But don't put it in for more than 5 minutes at it, unless it's like ridiculously wet. But if it comes out with just a little bit of wet on it, only try 5 minutes. Don't go crazy because you don't want your cake to be dry. That was the big thing about the red velvet cake, not to overcook it, not to overbeat it, not to over anything it because it'll get dry, because it'll get, you know, it'll fall, it'll do this, it'll do that. So the same with this one. You don't want to play around with it and have it in that oven too long. I just happen to know that 13 by 9 by 2s usually bake for 40 minutes. So we're going to try the 40 minutes. The, in the cookbook for this cake, it has it only in a layer, so it didn't have the option of the oblong pan. And that's it. I'm going to go check my other peanut butter recipe to see if that's something we should do here, peanut butter frosting recipe. But in the meantime, I'm going to get this in the oven. I'm going to bake it and start thinking about what Tim needs for dinner. And then um, we're either going to use the peanut butter frosting that we did like six months ago or five months ago or whenever we did it. Or I will go look to see what the new one looks like and maybe I'll just do another peanut butter frosting for you because this one's fabulous too. All right. Thanks. Have fun.